I'm Annie Fox for Family Confidential, Secrets of Successful Parenting. My guest today is Louise Masson Sattler. Dr. Sattler is a school psychologist and educational consultant. Today, we'll be talking about public education and how to make classrooms more inclusive for children with special needs. Hi, Louise. Welcome to Family Confidential. Hi, Annie, and thank you so much for inviting me. Well, thank you for accepting my invitation. You and I go back a couple of years at least, and I think we met initially on Twitter, could be, but I've always been an admirer of your work, and I... I want to um, give you an opportunity today to help educate my viewers and listeners about kids with special needs and a specific um, segment within that special needs population, deaf and hard of hearing kids and kids with autism. So as we start the new school year, Mm -hmm. I would love for you to give us some tips about how we can make classrooms more inclusive for those kids. Oh, perfect question. What a perfect time of year to be asking that question. Well, let's break it down. First, the hard of hearing children usually don't need as many accommodations as a child who is deaf. So a hard of hearing child will have more than likely a hearing aid. So one of the things teachers can do is to make sure they have spare batteries in the classroom. So the child does not need to interrupt their schedule and be that kind of child that kind of walks away, asks to go to the nurse's office or down to the guidance office just to get batteries. It'd be so much easier if batteries could be placed just simply in a locker or a drawer that is easily accessible to the children. What um, a, great, a great tip. I never would have thought of that, and it's terrific. So what you're saying for a parent of a child who is hard of hearing, to give the teacher a heads up and a supply of spare batteries before school starts. Exactly. Something as easy as that makes a big difference in inclusion because then the child isn't kind of, oh, yeah, 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 go go to the nurse's office. It's not a deal. It's just it's as if changing your batteries inside of any kind of small appliance that you would bring to school, you know, whatever. I love it. Uh, another tip. Another tip would be for cochlear implants, whether they are deaf or hard of hearing, if they're doing any kind of physical activity such as the recess time where they're going to play maybe football or tag, or they have swimming lessons. You know, some schools do have indoor pools. Make sure you take off the gadget, the exterior portion of the cochlear implant. I don't even want to tell you how expensive it is to replace it or repair it. We're not talking tens of dollars. We're talking hundreds and thousands of dollars. Wow. So, so this is the responsibility of the child and or the teacher? Well, how young is the child? You can right, have a, a five-year-old in a yeah. preschool right. who will not know to do that. A high school okay. student will be, you know, things happen. Uh, but encouraging the parents to encourage the student is one thing. But teachers and every, every teacher, including your physical education teacher, needs to be really astute to those different challenges. Mm-hmm. And how about kids on the autism spectrum, Louise? What kind of special accommodations um, should teachers and parents be aware of so that they feel more, more included in the class? With children with autism, Annie, the physical environment is very important. So a child who has sensory issues is not going to like a lot of noise, a lot of bright lights, and will want continuity in the classroom. So a teacher should keep the desks where they are throughout the year. If you switch it up, then you're, you're liable to stir up a hornet's nest. Wow. Also, you know those tennis balls that you can cut out and put on the bottom of chairs and desks? That is very helpful to reduce the noise. The everyday noise that most kids don't notice is extremely problematic to some children on the autism scale. So what you're suggesting is that um, a desk, every desk in the classroom be outfitted with old tennis balls. Little tennis balls. Little tennis balls. I've worked, if there's (laughs) carpet in the classroom, that's preferable actually. Now a child who perhaps on the autism spectrum might also need an assistant. So positioning the assistant not to block the other children and also to allow the child with autism to have peer relationships. So sometimes it's important. Are you on one side of the desk or the other? Well, if a child can't interact with the next door peer, that could be a problem. Um, this is this brings up an interesting point in terms of um, educating the rest of the class about about this child who has some differences. And does that happen um, to a letter with a letter to a parent before school reconvenes? For example, does it happen when the child is in the classroom or is not in the classroom? How would you suggest the best way to handle this is? 
Well, because of certain rules and regulations, <laughs> letters to the parent are usually not advised or allowed. Okay, and why is that? Uh, because there were privacy rules as okay. well. So, but that does not mean that the parent of the child or designated adult could be a little in service for the children in the classroom, such as, hey, everyone, if you're talking to Jane, it'd be really great that you talk, you know, face to face. Don't talk behind your back. For instance, if she is hearing that's impaired. A, that's, that's a good rule for anyone. Don't exactly, talk behind someone's back. <laughs> the kids don't realize it. The other thing is that shouting is not good for a child with autism or for a child with deafness. You know, deaf children will say, you can shout all you want. I still can't hear you, but thanks for trying. Mm -hmm. uh, so really what you need to do is just do a little mini in-services, but I would not bombard the children with the do's and the don'ts. The, they'll figure it out. Okay. If a child has intense needs, then that's something else. You might want to pull them aside when, when that child is not in the classroom and, and say, hey, this is what we need in the classroom and not to do. But okay. if the child's included all day long, then we should make it natural and really um, try to reduce any bullying. Uh, you know, snap any of those negative comments or, ooh, she can't do this or whatever it should be. She needs a special spoon to eat. Those kinds of things should, it's okay to acknowledge, yes, she has a different way to eat or to sit or whatever, mm -hmm. but it is not okay to bring it out in a negative way. And we need to sort of set the tone for that. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking this would be a great topic for a parent, a, a PTA meeting mm -hmm. so that, um, you know, because parents need to have a, a, a raised level of awareness about any kid with special needs who's in the school, whether it's in your child's class or not. It, it offers parents opportunities to be compassionate and to reach out in friendship to the parents of these children with special needs. But it also gives them great opportunities to be inclusive outside of the school environment in terms of inviting children over for after school play dates and, and things like that. Um, have you ever had opportunities mm -hmm. to speak to PTA oh, yeah. groups. <laughs> yes, of course. And you know that. Uh, one of the things as a school psychologist that I found my role to be was to make bridges. So to make bridges between families who have children with challenges and those who have typical developing children. What I find is that the children are really the dynamic and the bridge. They're the ones who are very willing to make friends, particularly the younger ones. And it's the parent of maybe the typical child who's nervous to have the other child over. What if they do something? What if I don't know what to do? What if I don't know how to communicate? Mm -hmm. So having a group play date, parents and children together, is really valuable. Not the just drop off, but you know, being able to just get to know each other as people. Yeah. And as you know, I I know the parents who have special needs children will say. I really wish I had a mom to go out with coffee. But sometimes when I go out with my child and they act up, I feel very, you know, like people are looking at me and, and self-conscious. So I don't always do those activities. We, you know, but more and more children are being born with autism. One out of every 88, I'm sorry, one out of every 88 children in the United States in the year 2014 will be diagnosed with autism by kindergarten. Wow. Yeah, and I'm sure those parents, as you say, do feel socially isolated at times. And this is something that we as a community can do a much better job of in the school classroom and outside of the school classroom. I love it. Um, we only have a couple more minutes now, Louise, and I'm wondering if you'd be so kind as to let um, our listeners and viewers know um, where they can learn more about, about the work that you do. Uh, they can certainly go to my uh site which is signingfamilies.com and that's where you can learn about the special education portion of my world uh, particularly on how to uh, learn sign language for your classroom for your home and I'm really focused Danny as you know on safety issues so disaster preparedness in the event that there's an emergency in a school or in a community I would like our emergency responders as well as our community members to be prepared for all the children and families in the community and especially with those who can't speak for themselves such as a child with severe autism uh, and then also uh, you can find me at louisesattler.com that's a little bit of a landing page to take you to my blog and other places where I am on the internet and you can find out some other quirky things that I'm involved in. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> Great. Thanks so much for your time, Louise, and also for the excellent work that you do. I really Annie, appreciate Annie, right it. back at you. You know I'm a big fan of yours, too. So goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. I'm Annie Fox for Family Confidential. To learn more about my work with tweens, teens, and parents, visit AnnieFox.com. And check out my book, Teaching Kids to Be Good People, Progressive Parenting for the 21st Century. Tune in next week when my guest will be Dr. Beth Onafrak. Dr. Beth and I will be talking about helping children thrive by teaching little kids to deal effectively with big emotions. Until next time, happy parenting. Thank you.